Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, create and configure Server 2012 failover cluster. Uh, so Server 2012 failover cluster uh, provides us uh, easy, I mean it's the easiest approach so far as compared to previous failover clusters from 2003 and 2008. Um, so failover cluster is used to provide high availability to one or more tasks for example uh, critical services such as exchange or databases so basically failover cluster is to provide high availability now let's uh, see our environment so in this uh, in this lab what I'm gonna do is I have three machines I have one server that is known as windserv1 with IP address 100.2 uh, whereas this is my domain controller as well this is my domain controller as well DNS as well it is going to be my storage server as well uh, I'm gonna start iSCSI target on this and then share uh, uh, share a disk partition uh, and provide it to the two nodes of the cluster so basically this is my storage uh, whereas I have Wint SRV2 and Wint SRV3 uh, they'll be having two network interfaces one in network interface uh, will be 192.168.100.20 second one will on the second server it will be 192.168.100.30 um, Okay, let me just make a quick correction here. These are not the IP address that will be used. So the two IP addresses that will be used are are these. This is so it has two network interfaces because the failover cluster requirement uh, not a hundred percent mandatory requirement, but it's. Um, but uh, it is recommended requirement in which you have at least two network interfaces one public network interface for users to connect to uh, the server second one is the private network interface that is used for heartbeat purposes so this has its own network so uh, our private network card connects to the private network card of the second node which is this so this server node 1 has two network interfaces and node 2 also has two network interfaces later on once we're, we're gonna install the failover clustering feature on both of them uh, the process will be very simple uh, first of all make sure that all these machines are installed properly their names are installed properly IP addressing is done properly they're all pinging they're all sitting on one network once that is done I would say take a snapshot of these all virtual machines uh, secondly I would say uh, then start working from storage first create a storage and then come to uh, uh, your Wind Server 2 which is Node 1 which will act as Node 1 and Node 2 uh, no, and Wind Server 3 act as Node 2 um, so once the storage is configured so we're gonna create a disk here and then uh, assign a IQN number to that and then we are going to connect this to two of the nodes here uh, through iSCSI initiator once the disk is connected this will be connected to one of them at a time but it has to have a shared storage failover clustering server requirement now uh, and then we're going to install failover clustering feature on both of them and once they are configured after that failover will open the failover clustering console and first of all validate our setting and then we'll configure it now here this is a virtual cluster name so we're gonna call it wind clu name cluster name and the IP address will be 199 this is just a virtual cluster name all users will be connected here and they'll be sending uh, the user connection to the active node uh, idea is that if one node goes down automatically passive node will become active node and hence user won't see any disconnection if this node goes down okay so having said that let's jump back to our lab in our lab 
we have three servers went went server two server three uh, for now they are simple server uh, this server has active directory installed and these both machines are joined to active directory just to make sure we can go to local server and I can see that this is joined to win.pri this is also joined to win.pri and here uh, this is itself is a win.pri because it's a domain controller so it's fine secondly firewalls are off um, and third uh, IP addresses are 100.10 is this 100.20 is the second one 100.30 just like we have it in our diagram so this is 100.10 domain controller this is 100.20 and this 100.30 so let's start with our, our storage configuration so in this I'm gonna add the storage configuration before we add it will be iSCSI target before I create iSCSI target on this just make sure that you have in add roles and features iSCSI target services enabled uh, so which is in there file and storage services you go down and here this should be installed iSCSI target server if this is not installed you won't be able to make a disk partition or a shared storage for the other two servers so once this is done um, secondly we need to go here we need to go here here I can create iSCSI target server but before that I need to have additional desk for now I can see in this machine there is only one desk let me create another desk to this and for that we can go here settings and we can go to add in this we're gonna add a second desk let this disk be 60 or 40 or whatever because it's a thin provisioning it doesn't matter um, and now the disk is added now when the disk is added you will verify the disk right here it would appear as offline but first you need to need to refresh this soon as it is refreshed it says that this disk is right here so the disk is the disk that I just added is this and it is unknown it is already initialized but it is unknown in your case it might not be initialized it might be offline just a matter of right click and so in your case it might be something like this you can just right click and bring it online but for now we'll leave it offline now the second thing is I need to create a disk partition that needs to be presented to these two which is from our diagram it is I need to create this storage that is coming out from this so in that what I need to do is I'll go to iSCSI and I say iSCSI virtual desk as soon as I go there now you see it is only able to see the online desk so the only online desk available is C which we cannot use uh, this is I wanted to show you that sometimes the disk doesn't appear here the reason is the disk is not online or initialized so we'll go back to the disk right click on this offline desk and bring it online as soon as you bring it online and now when you go here it still won't appear because you need to initialize it so here uh, this disk let's bring it initialize the disk once it is initialized now go back to this wizard again still it is not here uh, one more time we'll go back and now we'll format this disk so make sure you're now formatting your C drive so it's your one zero always refer to the default disk one is the new disk we we'll create a new volume and in this you don't have to select anything in particular we'll just just format this once this is done go back to iSCSI now create it now you see this so this disk will be used as shared external disk so next here it will ask us to create a virtual disk name so I'm gonna call this iSCSI VD VD1 iSCSI VD1 and then next I'm gonna use the full capacity 
9559 sorry dot 8 and next existing so it will be connecting to existing server so this will be presented to this existing uh, assign this iSCSI version is for existing iSCSI target actually existing iSCSI target is um, not this I want to create a new one for this and here we're gonna call it ISCSI 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 target 1 just name it iSCSI target 1 and then add iSCSI initiator. Now at this screen it is just saying that which servers should this access should this disk have access to um, uh, which which servers can access this disk. So in this case one server is Win2 which is this one and I want to add the second one which is Win SRV3 because both needs to access Win SRV let's see three and so query oh okay we can add actually one at a time so first of all this and I'm gonna add the second one which is browse went SRV3 and okay so I've added both. If you don't add this, then this disk won't be able to, uh, those, these servers won't be able to disk. So make sure that these both are appear here. Now the next one, no need to do anything. Once this is all done, the disk partition will be ready. So here, it is not connected. We're going to connect it from these. So here, the disk partition is ready. Now work here is done. All we need to do, now go on to the second server and then go to Tools and go to uh, iSCSI Initiator, which is from Tools, and just type the IP address of the storage server. Here, quick connect. It should should be able to connect as long, oh sorry, not 100, it would error out. Um, I'm gonna open on the third one as well. And 192, 168, 100.10. Quick connect, it connects. Click OK, and here it failed because I did the wrong address. Let's connect this to 100. Quick connect, it will connect to succeeded so it has the previous I think I tried it before so let me disconnect one of them so this is the one that I'm connected to this is the name this is actually the previous one uh, let me try to remove this if I can if not it doesn't matter I'm connected to the right one now how to verify if they, it is connected to iSCSI server all you need to do is go in here my computer you won't see anything here but if you go to uh, actually if you go to manage right click on computer go to manage and then in manage actually not in manage need to go to server manager then we need to go to tools and within tools we need to go to computer management and from computer management disk management now there are other ways to go here as well so it now found the new disk disk one this disk one is the one that we just connected from the other server so if you're able to see this this is unallocated it is not used all we need to do is create a simple just right click on this disk and create a simple volume next 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 done now this disk is available within computer so this is how um, this is how we add a new disk. This disk is actually coming from here. 
So this disk is actually uh, this disk. So the storage configuration is done back to the diagram what we just did. We added a disk, we uh, partitioned it, make it a uh, iSCSI, make uh, make it available for iSCSI here and now this is the disk 59 GB and now it is connected to both of them. Now in clusters what happens is only one disk can connect to uh, this disk at a time for example if the disk is connected to this node 1 you won't see it you won't find it in node 2 so here you won't find it unless there are other releases so so this is our storage configuration now the very next thing what we need to do is very next thing what we need to do for failover clustering um, I'm gonna stop this video here it will be the part one for failover clustering where we configure the storage in part two I'm gonna show you how to configure implement failover cluster thank you